Hey everyone, me and my buddy Nate are back again with another uh, movie review, and he has requested this uh, the Crocodile Hunter Collision Course for our uh, next uh, video. I want to thank you again, Nate, for joining me and requesting this movie. I am always honored to fill the guest critic chair, man. I was just glad to have you here. Yeah, this uh, is a movie I had never seen before. Um, I've never though, heard of it. Maybe I have just been a bit since you had like first suggested it. Um, I admittedly hadn't watched much of Steve Irwin's uh, stuff before, which is a um, bad mark on my part. But uh, but he was a uh, a really good man, and the uh, compassion and conviction he had for conservation and his love of animals was something that uh, I believe will stand the test of time. And his movie, uh, yeah, it it's a uh, as you said, it's it can be over the top at times, but you know, he had a, bl you could tell he had a blast doing this movie and it wasn't meant to be totally serious. It was a, uh, more so a comedy movie, but like the, um, messages it had in it, I felt were really good. It's just an, it's just a movie to get Steve Irwin to show off wildlife and the plot. It doesn't even matter. Yeah. Like it's like showing a respect and a consideration for the animals that we share the planet with all the, all the creatures that come in all shapes and sizes that so and he as he stated in the movie like are like less lovable well actually are less loved by some people than others um you know uh snakes spiders and crocodiles um, unfortunately have had i concur with snakes i'm terrified well it's more so like he said like snakes aren't evil creatures that seek out killing people they're just they're just animals just following their nature as all animals do it's just like it's a, it's one thing to be you know ha have a fear of thing i'm not it's not that i'm trying to like i got you yeah it's just um the way we approach um, animals and conservation is something we have to keep in mind because um, animals are, you know, they're not, um, they're not um, villains or monsters, despite how certain media and everything and stories have pushed them, you know, through the years. It's just with some good movies. Keep in mind, it's just uh, the f human humanity's fear of certain creatures and the unknown can like evolve into like more like. Um, less considerate if not i will admittedly say cruel like um presentations and um portrayals of certain animals that's even been seen in more like beloved uh, movies but that's I was just waiting uh, for you to bring up jaws oh yeah that's like even steven spielberg said he regretted doing that movie and he said he had wished he hadn't done it because of the the portrayal and how it really degraded the image of sharks in it you regret that film but you don't regret the lost world that's I mean, I enjoy that movie more than, um, than Jaws. I mean, but that's that's something we can get into another time. But let's yeah, focus on this uh, I one. I despise Lost World. I think it's the worst Jurassic Park movie. Mm. But going into this, um, I immediately thought when you first suggested it, you know, him saying that Steve Irwin, like, he uses the animals to, like, met, like to, to oh, what's a good way of putting it? Uh, Dunks. To, well, undermined and humiliate the CIA agents that are going after the um, device, even though Steve Irwin has no idea that. Should we should we kind of summarize the quote unquote plot of this so people know what we're talking about? Yeah, if you all haven't uh, seen this movie, it's basically the CIA are trying to retrieve a uh, piece of technology. Hard drive, right. It's like a piece from a satellite, a black box that um, it contains a lot of vital like um, information on all kinds of people i think and steve Irwin uh doesn't know this but um the crocodile that um a crocodile eats it and um the people he thinks the people the cia agents are poachers who are going after the crocodile because you know poachers you know all the horrible things they do to animals and you know he hates poachers which i concur incredibly on because of all the horrible things poachers have done According to his wife, the only time he really ever lost his patience was with poachers, and he made them give up just by himself. Yeah, I mean, what does it say? Um, beware the uh, rage of a gentleman, or um, was maybe I'm mis maybe I'm misquoting that, but comment um, section will correct us. Yeah, please do. Um, and um, like the um, like the sorry, I keep um, droning on, but this matter of showing the how. Even though, like, the sh movie is about, is, like, pushing it in the way it's a recording for another show of theirs, and uh, it's like this, they go on this um, new wacky adventure trying to protect the cro a crocodile, even though that's, well, 
there is that one rancher who wanted to kill the crocodiles, but thankfully she, you know, changed her mind in the end. But uh, we can get into her in just a sec. But um, I was about to say, you know, my opinion on that character. But it's a um, the matter of like the the way the plot some... is there. Oh. No, go ahead. The plot is just there to fuel the movie. It doesn't matter at all. If you really analyze the plot, it makes no sense. Yeah, it's it's like I said, it's um. It's a road trip movie that just has a plot with it. Yeah, and uh, but I mentally thought from the way you described it, we would see more of Steve Irwin like um, undermining the CIA agents with the animals. I remember and... that being more in the movie until I rewatched it. To be honest, I forgot a lot of the scenes in the movie even existed. It, it's okay. Like those, still those moments were really good where he used the uh, where uh, that that guy who was afraid of animals trying to. I'm up uh, to the. Uh, <laughs> I love that. Scene. And he pulls. Let's get out. a clip of that up in editing. Yeah. He's gorgeous. <laughs> this is where your journey ends, mate. Danger, danger, danger. <laughs> See ya. And he pulls that big uh, snake out, and the guy, you know, basically, uh, literally falls away because he does not want to get anywhere near that kind of. Yeah, and he gets run over if you really analyze it. Yeah, he almost did. Um, but then then, again, if I saw King Brown snake sliding towards me, I think I'm doing the same thing. <laughs> yeah, it, it, I just find it funny that uh, we see that even though he has no idea they're not actually poachers, just how like the contempt he has for poachers because well, he, he didn't exactly try to win over his confidence. Yeah, I mean because you know that one guy who was afraid of animals, he was willing to uh, shoot. They literally he... start ramming the truck. I'm like, wouldn't it be easier just to pull them over and like, hey, you have something we're looking for? Like, granted, they might not have stopped, but wouldn't they have a badge? I don't know, like, um, there's stupid. Just, there's a bunch of plot holes you could pick apart in this movie. Yeah, there's the whole reputation of a certain, there, the uh, CIA's um, reputation is not exactly, uh, but but uh, exactly. Not the touching most, on uh, that present day. Climate. Yeah, I gotcha. But anyways, um, and there was also the matter of him, like, uh, the, I think I also remember him, uh, the guy shooting at the, the rancher's dogs and, uh, he didn't and, shoot at him. He was just shooting on the ground to get him away. Oh, true. But uh, I did. My favorite scene with the rancher, though, is where she shot the shotgun at him, saying that uh, you know him taking a uh, taking a shot at her dogs was something that uh, that she said was. Uh, uh, a, Are we allowed uh, to say that word on YouTube? Well, let's just say uh, she would have filled them full of holes which you know a lot of people um yeah, avoid ran... demonetization yeah but like that was a really i do really like that part because you could show it showed that she actually did care about her dogs and like a lot of people uh feel similar to her is like people if they that character had dynamite yeah a lot of people um like will talk about like if like their dogs are ever threatened or harmed then they're you know they'll cut loose on the people who do it but that's just a side thing there but, is one scene with her i really love uh where she very stupidly hangs the chicken from the tree to try to lure it and then it pulls her to the water i'm like no offense to her with her weight i'm like what do you think's gonna happen moron <laughs> i mean she knew that if she stayed in the water she was dead because gunner no that's she's literally in the crocodile's element and she no, would what been... I meant is like what I meant is like she didn't put herself high enough off the water, number one, to where it could jump at her if she fell. And number two, when she gets back on land, it did not charge her and she was unconscious. I'm like, well, yeah. you know how this scene would have really happened. Yeah, she would have been literally uh lunch meat for oh, the gator yeah. the crocodile, excuse me. It's just like, oh yeah. pretty meal. I don't even have to do anything. Yeah. I mean I meant like uh this goes unnecessarily R rated. Yep, yeah, uh, pre- this is a comedy after all. But you know, predators are opportunistic, and like, uh, especially since she was trying uh, to kill him, he a crocodile would not have uh, w- would have taken the chance and literally eaten her. But because this is a comedy movie, get we, this we, up in editing if you can. Just get a a scene of that crocodile looking at her with a Mortal Kombat finish her line. But you, you mongrel. Finish her! Oh dear. Oh. 
flawless victory. <laughs> I'll I'll make I'll try to make sure I can get that in there, but uh the uh I think, I think this is the most fun we're having doing a review to be honest with you. Yeah, because the the <laughs> the, the uh, uh the animals and how they're presented. Yes, they're not totally being realistic to their nature, but like give, given this is a comedy and Steve Irwin is wanting to sh- still present the animals as being true to their, na- oh, yeah. to their nature, but also not in the way that's uh, family friendly. I guess you could say it, he couldn't like have like he and his wife are having fun. Oh yeah, admittedly, I know this you know, wasn't supposed to be a totally serious movie, but admittedly, her some of her line deliveries in this movie did make me cringe a lot. It, that was it's the just, writing. Like, it's the writing. Yeah, but here in Steve, I heard. I'm oh, sorry to keep interrupting. You're good. Go ahead. I heard Steve Irwin improvised a lot of his lines to make it more realistic. I don't know if that's true or not, but it would make sense because it sounded like he did improvise a lot on the fly. Like when he says, an ant just bit me, I'm like, that doesn't sound like it was written in the script. Yeah. Yeah. Like I said, it was like, it was framed as him recording another of his uh, episodes for his show. And that's the kind of the style they went with. But it was a great show. Oh yeah. I watched the heck out of it as a kid. I started talking Australian in pre-kindergarten. I'll need to rewatch some of that at some point, but. um, He died too young. Yeah. And he wouldn't have wanted the uh, stingray that, you know, you know, uh, did him in to well, be hurt. Do we want to get into this? Or because but no, that's that's he that's. Of, he did kind of doom himself. Is all I'm going to say by pulling the barb out. But uh, anyways, getting back to the um. Yeah, moving on, moving on, moving on. Mo- but g- getting back to the movie, it, there is a lot of important lessons besides the comedy, and he talks about this like with the crocodile and its role in the ecosystem. Like having a a apex predator in the ecosystem is very important to keep balance because when you have like a healthy population of predators to hunt prey, it keeps them in a healthy um, number and to keep their um, herds and everything or or their numbers depending on if they're social animals or not like healthy because they the predators will pick off the old, the sick, the weak, the injured, and that keeps her 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 populations. Uh, stronger and like in a healthier number because and it also keeps like um vegetation in like a healthier amount because getting stripped bare yeah because like it reminds me of this one quote from one of the song of ice and fire books and i know you i uh, haven't i don't think you've read that but it's it's i feel i've heard the quote. name but i'm not yeah. familiar with the quote it's it's one of the children in the forest say like basically saying um the deer would like a strip I can't remember exactly how it goes, but like basically a deer would strip the forest of all vegetation if there's no wolves to hunt them. And having predators to keep hunting prey and having these um, pre- predator p- prey populations in a healthy balance is important to keep maintaining an ecosystem because one without one or the other, like it would all fall apart. There must be balance mm. in Australia. Mm. And I think Thanos had Australia in mind when he vaporized half the planet. Well, I, I think it. actually he might have spared Australia. He's like, there's already so many things here that can kill you. I'm not needed. Maybe. And this is important for every um, every place in the world that has wildlife. Oh, yeah. Like having a yes, dom- even himself says it's the law of nature. And having a, a dominant pre- dominant apex predator, whether whether it's a lion a wolf or whatever it's important to keep make sure they are in the in their natural habitats in a healthy population yeah. and keep them protected and safe because without them the the ecosystem will fall apart maybe another right. predator can you know take their place and like keep maybe like nature can heal itself which in some ways it can it can it's just like like with yellowstone when the wolves were reintroduced they really balanced out the ecosystem everything from her populations to even the rivers were starting to grow healthier but it's something that i feel is um, always important to remember about you know his legacy and also what the lessons he tried to tried to teach sorry about moving around a lot by the way guys i've got some i got a kink in my neck and a bad knee so i gotta keep moving sorry about that again but uh but going back to, I guess you could say the more comedic elements, I do, one of the parts I kind of, I always find funny is where, you know, after those two CIA guys are, you know, getting to the, get, you know, fall into the river after that, their guide uh, drops the dynamite on them. Uh, Steve and his wife um, uh, come up on their boat and he <laughs> talks about how if they stay in the water, uh, the hunters will become the hunted, which, and he just, he just drives off <laughs> because I mean, I'm like, isn't that going against your message? I mean, not necessarily. I mean, uh, it's a matter of just uh, respecting nature. And at any moment, um, 
things can uh, turn for the worse. And because he thought they were poachers, uh, he really had no love for them. Maybe this would have been a good comedic moment is if they turn around and see one just raise out of the water behind them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that would have been good. <laughs> and it's this matter of... He, the war- costume with them in the water. <laughs> Yeah, that that might have uh, been better here, like as an, ironic an Australian thing. version of the Jaws theme, which is one of their native instruments. Doing the um da da. I'm really glad that um we we we're, we're doing this movie because I it's fun to talk about, even yeah. if it's not necessarily the best. Like the plot is dumb; it's intentionally dumb. I'm convinced, but it has fun being dumb. Yeah, it's not like a movie where it's just you feel everybody didn't want to work on it. Yeah, or it's like oh, I got. I gotta fire my agent because of this. Mm. But if, if a movie studio, by the way, shout out to the MGM logo replacing the lion with the crocodile for the yeah. opening credits. That was good. I forgot I did, that was even in the movie. It's something that um, this is a good mo- good movie example of even like a movie that isn't taking itself ser- seriously. It's as, like a B movie. But, like, the silliness of the film and the uh, reasoning behind it and, like, what he was trying to do with it was something that I really, I feel, is an effective movie. It's a fan, it's essentially just an extended episode of The Crocodile Hunter. Basically, yeah. Given a bigger budget. And, to be fair, they do the best with the budget they were given. Yeah. I mean, the CGI shots in this movie are horrible, I think we can agree. I like you're talking about, like, that helicopter scene at the end. We'll get that up in editing if we can. <laughs> And then maybe the opening shot with the satellite looks really bad if you pause it. Yeah, it's it's not some those How things. How does that work? By the way, it's self-destructive. It gets out of his orbit. Don't satellites always get out of their orbit and have to be recorrected? I don't know. Maybe that was just a uh, another thing of where they uh, weren't. Maybe the writing was just like you said. The writing and plot of this movie isn't exactly the most um, structurally sound. All the budget went into Steve Irwin, <laughs> which you know I don't blame them for because that was the the. Um, He's their star. He's their attraction for the movie. Yeah, it's the heart of the story and like the what he. Um, Plus, he did all the stunts with the animals. They didn't have to bring in a stuntman. It's like he knows how to handle these animals. I don't think he would have asked for a stuntman anyways. Well, no, that's what I'm saying is when sometimes when you go to make a film, the insurance companies will just not let certain actors do scenes. Yeah. Like Robert England, when he did Freddy vs. Jason on the director's commentary on the DVD, he said there were scenes when he was filming other stuff that he wanted to do and they just wouldn't let him do it because they were like, no, you're too big of a star. We don't want to risk you getting injured in the movie or, or in the series you're in. And the same guy who played Jason was a stuntman before, when he did the movie. Mm-hmm. And he's like, I wanted to do the scene where I was lit on fire because I was experienced with a stunt, but they wouldn't let me do it because I was too big a name of an actor. Hmm. So they let me do the lesser stunt and they let my doubles do it. And I coached him on how to do the stunt because I was more experienced with it. I gotcha. And the one scene he did get set on fire was on accident. He knew what to do about it, thankfully, because he hmm. was a stuntman. He hit a prop that had sparks supposed to come out of it because it's like his weapon gets stuck and it actually lit his costume on fire. Really? Yeah, he's like, he knew what to do. He just lied down and let them extinguish him. Cut, let's do a retake. I gotcha. So it, it, it does matter when you have an actor like that, but I think he's like, no, I'm filming all the scenes with the animals in this movie. Shout yeah. out to the most horrible Australian accent in history. <laughs> yeah, this is something that I feel... Um that it's a, that the um heart of the um messages and the uh, spirit of this is what really counts the most for the movie even Terry Irwin you know the acting moments and the like you said the plot you know aren't exactly the best but um it's more so the um it's the, forgivable under this because of just who's attached to it yeah and the um meaning of it and like if what it was you... played more serious, like it's a straight-up film, I think we would definitely judge it very harshly on that premise. Yeah. But because it's so lighthearted, and you could tell, again, it's just an extended episode of a Crocodile Hunter show. Yeah. it's. I think it really does well with what it means to do, and I think uh, that there's something that um, everyone can learn from this movie. I learned how to laugh <laughs> at <laughs> Steve Irwin again. <laughs> again, 
you can tell he's having fun in all it takes. Yeah, it's still some of my favorite parts are when he's messing with the uh, CIA agents with the animals. He almost brutally murders them how many times? Well, I mean, people um, now uh, there's um, people are taking more, I guess you guess you could say lethal measures against poachers in certain parts of the world, because in Africa, there's actual like former military operatives. Oh, yeah forming anti-poaching units to hunt them. And in some places also, there are people who I think are killing poachers on site because uh, poachers have been um, been killing off certain endangered animal species from everything from horns to, to hides. Nice movie and the movie review. What about lions? Yeah, it's the just the sheer amount of um, animals that have been slaughtered by people like this is something that, that I don't know if people realize because as much because some of these animals have like very few um, members of their species left or yeah, just that's like the tragedy of it right there and like you see some of these images online like the um I'm trying to remember to put some of these up in editing like um there's this um mountain of bison skulls that were of these bison that were killed centuries ago as a means also to um to uh, to um, systematically attack the hearts and spirits of the uh, First Nations people who relied on and respected bison, and it was also a matter of uh, you know the I can't comment on something I don't know about. I I understand, and it's this um, and also there's also the matter of like uh, like uh, with um uh, tigers and leopards in Asia where they are hunted for their uh, pelts, but also like tigers have been hunted for their bones because in some places their bones have been used for medicine, but because of the sheer amount. Are they also of, used in um, ceremonial reasons too, if I'm not mistaken. They might be a uh, large one, major, major ones. I've heard that they've been killed for were for their um their hides because of the um quality for clothing and everything, despite you know the sheer amount of these animals being killed. And well, I mean, Spielberg got in trouble because he, as a joke, posed with that um, Triceratops animatronic that he used in Jurassic Park. As a, like, you didn't hear about that? Um, no, I don't think so. Uh, as a joke, he posed with a shotgun like he hunted the Triceratops from the movie. Oh. Like some animal rights activist said, how dare he kill such a rare animal? I'm like, idiots. They literally treated it like it was a real animal that was still alive. It was a big deal for a while. I didn't hear about this. It's, it's clearly a prop. Come on, guys. But with the um, like, and he uh, he uh, with this, it's a matter of like um, the matter of conservation is something that people are still struggling with because like in certain parts of the world, animals uh, species are being taken off like uh, protected species lists and endangered the species. Eagles, the manatees in my state of Florida, for example, the panthers are getting better. And um. Like people are, you know, there is like, there is matters of like um, wildlife, or specifically animals like uh, wolves and coyotes who are being like run down with snow uh, snowmobiles or like being shot from helicopters, and like some reports of like uh, wolves and bears being and their cubs and pups are being killed in their dens. And there's this one video in Alaska where I'm I won't put this up in editing because it's just too heartbreaking to to listen to. But basically, these two, this father and son do these. These assholes basically kill a mother bear and her cubs while they're in their den, and you can hear the bears screaming. It's it's things like this that it's block. tragic, but it's hard to listen to. I I understand. But sorry for cutting you off. No, it's I okay. Get I get around that. I I understand. It's not something I like talking about, but it's something that. <sighs> let's get a let's get a clip of editing of the redneck woman from Australia to lighten the mood. But I tell you one thing. She puts a foot on land? Well, now. That's my dog's territory. Yeah, it's... Tell me she's not a redneck. An Australian version of a redneck. Yeah, uh... We, yeah, it, it, she's, like, you know, kind of pushed in that matter, like... And, she's a hillbilly. <laughs> yeah. I just imagine... Imagine if the, since the writing is so bad, they just cast a woman from Alabama or your state of Kentucky in this movie in that role. I have one day for some Barbie tonight, Bubba. Yeah, but like I said, thank you. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah she thankfully. makes that reference, by the way. Yeah, like when she, uh, the guy, oh, the guy who played, uh, uh, I forget the actor's name, but he played Fair, Yeah, he played Faramir in The Lord of the Rings. Um, really? Yeah. Um, uh, he, um, I haven't seen all those movies. Thank you. Like, and like I said, 
we I do you do need to watch the, those at some point. But um, believe me, some friends that your fans don't know about won't shut up about it. They want to crucify me for liking Battle of the Five Armies. I'm sorry about that, but um, you know one of the, you know the one guy. <laughs> but um, but she does change her mind at the end, and I actually think she, she has was, problems with crocodiles. They point out. <laughs> yeah. And we see her, like, literally this big crocodile's mouth just opens up as she's, like, fleeing away. Please get a shot of that up at editing with, like, a cartoon sound effect. Like, yeah. um, this, like, a, maybe the goofy sound effect as she's running. And that grumpy rancher has joined the fauna and fisheries department as a volunteer. But she's still having a little bit of trouble dealing with crocodiles. <laughs> maybe. And, uh. Something stupid. I mean, in the best way possible. Yeah. And, uh, but I actually think in some ways she might actually, if, you know, she learns from Steve and his family more, she'd actually might become a very effective, like, anti-poacher. Because imagine she right. goes off chasing poachers with, with her pack of dogs. Like, after she disarms them, she sets the <laughs> dogs on them. That would be awesome. That'd be terrifying. Just seeing the equivalent of an Australian redneck with a chug jug with a <laughs> double barrel shotgun. <laughs> and a large pack of dogs coming after you. And how does she get dynamite is still my question. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I do like Just the moment. imagine seeing her running at you with a chug jug. She's like, let's light the dynamite. <laughs> and also those two part where those CIA agents like got back into the vehicle after somehow getting out of the river and they hear the growling and they turn around and see the dogs behind them. I just <laughs> don't know. The they're, they're just done at this point. <laughs> there was also that part where that one guy said he used that whistle to somehow like, um, uh, like uh, neutralize. Or the like, Arctic wolves. And he said they would attack. Like I'm just surprised he managed. No, to... he said they did. They sometimes did when it didn't work properly. Is what he said. I'm just surprised he managed to get away from them because in that kind of um, environment with those predators, frequencies like that can really disrupt dogs and make them back off. Yeah, it's just when they do it. If when he said when they would attack or do attack, like I don't see him out running even. Well, like I. This matter of like um of getting hunted by a pack of angry dogs, let alone it's Arctic wolves. Yeah, it's it's the insanity of the yeah, plot, Jeremy. Yeah, 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 I, yeah. It's made, like we have a redneck Australian woman with dynamite. I think anything flies at this point. Yeah, and she literally has a glider. Yeah, I just, I just would love to see him being chased by those. What wolves. happened to her husband is my question. Uh, I never did clarify that. For all we know, she cooked them up. Just because not necessarily. Dark. Or maybe she got drunk and shot him. Well, if she is an Australian redneck, that is entirely possible. Yeah. Where's my dip? We're making too much fun of some of these. We're making these scenes funnier than the actual movie. Yeah, but it's a it's a really enjoyable movie. Like the later part, it's a are, movie where just you can laugh at. Yeah, and that's the that's the uh, part of the joy of it is because. You get to enjoy the more absurd and like comical parts, and this is something. Do we that... really need the plot about the CIA guys competing, or the big bosses and the CIA competing with each other? Uh, no, not really. Uh, there is one joke with the two CIA guys who make me laugh, where he's like, "Are you okay? Yeah, I'm good to go." And he just drops him back on the ground after he fell off the car. He's like, "Oh, good, let's go." You okay? <coughs> <coughs> I thought you said there was nothing to worry about in Australia. You're lucky it's such a friendly country. Anything broken? <sighs> nothing retribution won't fix. Good, <clears throat> let's go. Like, okay, Adel. <laughs> it's... There's, like, you know... Plus, is it me or is it just mean-spirited the CIA just gives them up to him? Yeah, that was like, another good part. Work? And check this out! The U.S. government gave us those two pesky poachers to work at Australia Zoo for nothing. And I reckon, after I give them a full Steve-O education, we'll be able to return them back to the wild where they belong. Number one. <laughs> I mean, I think they, because they thought they were so ineffective to being uh, beaten by a supposedly, like, unarmed, like, untrained civilian. Well, they say these guys have had good operations in the past, so it's like... Well, even like... Say what you will about George W. Bush. I don't think that's something he'd sign off on. I don't know. Uh, Was George I, W. Bush just drunk that day? Could be. I, but I just, like, those scenes of, like, those two guys working in the zoo and, like, the, those big snakes wrapped around their arms and everything. Oh, uh, I would hate that. I hate snakes. <laughs> but, Sorry about that, guys. We just got done outrunning a crocodile. <laughs> but um 
this was a really enjoyable movie, and I feel like, um, regardless of the questionable oh, elements, yeah. you could say this is something that it's a very movie that's definitely worth the watch and like the messages behind it. You can it. find it on DVD. It's really worth it. It's it's a really it, it did well in the box office. It made money back, so it definitely was a hit. I don't care if the critics were like, this movie makes no sense. Just turn your brain off. Have a fun movie, guys. Yeah, and... and I'm not going to be analyzing the story arc of the CIA agents. I just want to see people acting stupid, interacting with each other, and having just a glorified tour of Australia with a with a plot just shoved into it. And seeing them, especially the guy who was really trigger-happy around the animals, being uh, literally uh, shooting his pants. <laughs> yeah, being... Tortured by Steve Irwin because he thinks he's a poacher and seeing every he, animal in that movie tortures him at some point. Literally, I think all of the monitor lizard torture him that he comes across. And the uh this is definitely a uh one of this is definitely a really good movie. It's as, a preferred taste kind of movie, though, I will confess. Hmm. If you're not in the mindset for it, I mean just say the title, Crocodile Hunter, the co or the Crocodile Hunter Collision Course. If you can just analyze that title, you know what kind of movie you're going into. Yeah. But if you want something deep and dramatic, get out of here before mm. I feed you to my crocodiles. Yeah, it, it is definitely a um, an enjoyable movie, and oh yeah, it's something that like yeah, even if you don't like, even I found certain parts cringy. Well, most even if you get bored because there are some boring scenes in the movie, you're still having a fun time. Yeah, and it just gets better. As time goes on, especially when like Steve Irwin and his uh, and them like you know finally get into confrontation with those um, uh, CIA agents, it and has a ridiculous over the top climax that I don't even think we should spoil. <laughs> but yeah, literally just the fact that can you imagine what the stunt coordinator was briefed in during those moments? He's like, "I'm sorry, you want me to what? <laughs> can you yeah. have people riding at me in a paraglider dropping dynamite? Guys, just take that sentence, watch that scene." Yeah, I am glad that you requested that we uh, do this. A I don't even know if you'd like this one to be honest, because I know you love animals so much, and I thought you'd maybe think it was too over the top. But I do, like I said, some parts I'm not as fond of, but overall, it definitely is an enjoyable movie. It is mostly Steve Irwin, though. I think we can both agree. Yeah, it's just fun seeing a guy who was taken too early doing what he loves doing. Yeah. Guys, right, so I think it's time we give our ceremony a thumbs up or thumbs down, which is catching on whenever he and I do a review. I can't speak for when he does a solo review. Mm. All right. You want to go first? You're going to give it a... Okay, I was about to say, you better not. <laughs> oh, you, I'm going to give it a thumbs up, too. Yeah, this is a good movie. And with the... Um, with it's the, fun. Yeah. And I feel like if you... Um, it's definitely something that is... I'm really glad that Steve Irwin did this and all the messages. It's not a movie everybody's going to like, but if yeah. you just analyze, if you, again, if you just say the title out loud, it kind of gives you an idea of what kind of movie it's going to be. Yeah, and I'm glad Steve Irwin and his uh, family uh, did this because it is definitely a effective movie for what it what it means and what it what it like tries to spread in its messaging and also how they went about it. Yeah. I would have loved to have met Steve. Sadly, he got taken when I was still in elementary school when he died. Yeah. And do I want to say the Cards Against Humanity joke about that or not? Maybe uh, I'm not going to. Maybe another time. But uh, yeah, but there's yeah. a Cards Against Humanity joke about that. But again, I want to thank Which, you. Which um, you're, you're considering filming, aren't you? At maybe are you considering some... still filming some of our Cards Against Humanity games? I may at some point, I'm just trying to uh, figure out how to do that exactly because there's some editing stuff that I, I still don't really know the most about because I'm still trying to figure out a lot of stuff on um, iMovie and everything. I'm sorry I interrupted. Doctor. No, you're good. Uh, there's just some stuff in editing that I still don't know and I still have a lot to learn. Get the sensor bars ready for when we play that game. <laughs> Once again, I want to thank you, Nate, for requesting this movie and, and joining me in on reviewing it. Hey, I'm just glad to be here. I wonder what you got in store next time for both a solo and for me. There's a lot of good movies out there. We'll find them. Yeah, um, there's a, it's a bad one. We don't know. Yeah, there's also a few TV show um, uh, things I have in mind of re reviewing, too, that's recently come out in that last month or a couple of months. You want to so. say that as a teaser or do you not want to say it yet? Uh, not yet, because I'm still not sure what what I'll be doing next exactly. But you know, once maybe you um, we 
Go ahead. I was going to say, maybe talking about Ben 10 as a whole would be interesting in the future. At some point, yeah, we I definitely we do need to do that at some point. But I'm a huge Ben 10 fan, so. Yeah. Well, once again, Nate, I want to thank you for joining me and, and coming on to this video. I'm always glad to have you. And thank you all for watching. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll see you all next time. Or the crocodile's going to get you, boys and girls. <laughs> see you all.